Herr Stefczyk und ich, wir haben in den Jahren 2013 und 2016 an einem gemeinsamen terminologiebezogenen Projekt gearbeitet. Das Projekt war terminologiebezogen, wie ich gesagt habe, und war so ausgerichtet, dass wir versucht haben, ein didaktisches Konzept ins Leben zu rufen, in Bezug auf die äh, kollaborative oder gemeinsame Erstellung von Datenbanken im Rahmen der universitären Ausbildung von angehenden Übersetzerinnen und Übersetzern. Das war so das Motiv im Grunde genommen. Äh, warum wir uns für dieses Projekt entschieden haben, äh, es gab zumindest vier Gründe dafür, die ich jetzt kurz erläutere. Der erste Grund äh, waren die langjährigen Erfahrungen, die wir im Rahmen der Übersetzungsseminare bei uns gemacht haben. Und zwar sowohl Herr Stefczyk und auch ich Entschuldigung, haben oder unterrichten insbesondere äh, das Übersetzen von Fachtexten. Das heißt, wir geben Seminare und äh, Vorträge und wir haben festgestellt, dass in den Übersetzungsseminaren die Terminologie und Terminologiearbeit eigentlich immer a priori vorkommt und reflektiert wird. Allerdings haben wir festgestellt, dass es insbesondere um die sogenannte punktuelle Terminologiearbeit geht, aber die systematische Terminologiearbeit irgendwie zu kurz kommt oder kam. Das heißt, die Studierenden hatten nicht genügend theoretische Kenntnisse oder praktische Kenntnisse mit der systematischen Terminologiearbeit. Das heißt, wie tatsächlich die Terminologie dann auch in der Praxis vielleicht verwaltet wird für bestimmte Zwecke. Das war der erste Grund. Der zweite Grund war eben oder waren die Anforderungen der Berufspraxis, das heißt sowohl was die Auftragsgeber betraf, als auch die Übersetzer an sich. Die Übersetzer, damit meine ich die Kompetenzen einfach, die erwartet werden von denen in der Praxis, was sie alles können müssen oder sollen. Das war der dritte, zweite Punkt. Der dritte Punkt oder die dritte Motivation war eben ähm, die immer, ich sag mal, lauter werdende Überbrückung oder Verbindung zwischen der Theorie und Praxis. Das heißt, wie kann ich das jetzt tatsächlich, das was gefordert wird in der Praxis auch umsetzen kann? Und der vierte Punkt war eigentlich auch, oder sollte das Ergebnis dieser Motivation sein, und zwar, wir haben dann versucht, anhand von diesen drei Punkten, die ich genannt habe, haben versucht, das umzusetzen im Übersetzungsunterricht, in der Didaktik des Übersetzungsunterrichts bei uns, und zwar in Form einer Plattform, einer Basis, die für die Studierenden geschaffen werden sollte. Also wie kann ich während der universitären Ausbildung diese Kompetenz die Terminologie systematisch zu bearbeiten, zu verwalten, umsetzen. Und das Ergebnis dieses Projekts war eben äh, unsere Datenbank, Terminologie-Datenbank, Online-Datenbank, Transterm, wobei ich immer betone, bei äh, solchen Veranstaltungen, diese Terminologie-Datenbank versteht sich in erster Linie als didaktische Datenbank, didaktische Basis dafür, dass man dort üben kann, wie eben Terminologie systematisch zwei- oder mehrsprachig verarbeitet oder verwaltet wird. Äh, natürlich ist diese Datenbank äh, zugänglich, also frei zugänglich, man kann sich die Datenbank anschauen, aber nichtsdestotrotz werden hier insbesondere in erster Linie Abschlussarbeiten präsentiert, Terminologie bezogene Abschlussarbeiten, Diplomarbeiten oder Masterarbeiten, die bei uns äh, äh, angefertigt werden. Das heißt, jetzt sind die äh, äh, Master äh, also Masterarbeiten von unseren Studierenden. Somit würde ich äh, äh, das Wort an Herrn Stöpschi weiter übergeben und der Rest des Vortrags findet dann auf Englisch statt. Thank you very much for a kind introduction. Very nice. I think half of the job is done, <laughs> so <laughs> there's nothing more to do for me. But I would add, in, uh, in spite of the, the main issues that have been mentioned, I would like to introduce the main aspect of the platform that we have created several years ago. And that is a project that is very dear to my heart because it's, it's, uh, pro it's, it's process oriented. As Olga said, it's not fit for market. It's fit for purpose, but not in the terms of, of, the, of the product, but in terms of the process. So this transfer data databases or data bank 
is a platform which is uh, fit for the students who learn how to uh, work with terminology. The terminology is something that is neglected in terms of translation studies and uh, we have heard today by Mrs. Uh, Fischer, Fischer, it's a very, very, very kind introduction, why the terminology work is so important. And I would add not only for translators. And it is also my issue to uh, present it as uh, something that is very, very, uh, not only, uh, that, is, that is oriented not only from the didactic perspective, but also from the, from the perspective of the market. Uh, I've been working with students for several years. I've been working for, for uh, I've been dealing with uh, multi multilingual apps, and I can still say that technology is a big issue. Technology is great, you know that. Technology is great, but it's not perfect. Why? Because we are not perfect. And I, I mostly work with uh, young students, millennials. All of you are millennials, or Many of you work with millennials, and you probably know from your own experience that millennials are focused on the technologies in a different, in a different way, from a different mindset. They take the technology for granted. They take it something that is autonomous, without reflecting what's behind it. And that's a big, big danger, and also a big challenge for the didactics. That's why we are here to show them how to prepare terminology work and by, by, by getting them involved in the process. That's the best way to show them uh, how the terminology work should uh, can be done. Uh, the other thing is that these students who work with this terminology uh, can use it for their future, for the future employers. Because the, the employers they themselves don't have much knowledge about uh, the, the usefulness and the importance of terminology. And that's why I see our students as a great mediators between the, the training and the, the market. But before I introduce, I go into more details to our data, data, data bank, Transterm, I would uh, say a few words about the history of terminology because, well, that's basically what it's meant to be. Uh, the history in Slovakia, because the terminology in Slovakia has a long history. Unfortunately, this theoretical background of terminology is not developed further and should be developed further and should be applied to practice. And that's our goal. We want to raise awareness of terminology work among uh, practitioners, uh, uh, language service providers, etc., etc. But the terminology work, terminology research, science, has a long history. It started in the 50s, the 20th century, and here I would uh, point out two uh, important names, Massa and Horetsky, who laid down the foundation of modern uh, terminology work, terminology research. These names are very important in Slovakia, it's something like Wüster in, in Austria. And they developed the conceptual work of terminology. They developed, uh, Massar developed uh, a concept uh, of, it, it's called uh, the concept, uh, the wide concept, uh, I forgot that, I, 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 got, I keep it in Slovak, but it's, it's uh, the logic spectrum of a concept. It's a very great theory that, uh, uh, were practiced and based on this theory there were more terminology committees created in Slovakia and these terminology committees uh, uh, held meetings each year they created interesting uh, dictionaries from different domains and this culture, this terminology culture continued but with the, the death of these masters the terminology work has decreased However, nowadays there are some attempts at the, the Language Institute of, uh, of uh, Sciences in, in Bratislava who uh, strive 
to, to continue, who, who want to continue with uh, the th theoretical framework of Masar and Horetsky by organizing uh, workshops, events, and uh, they also created a terminology portal where they process uh, the terminology in different domains. So there are more than 70 domains. But, however, this is still on the scientific or on the, on the methodological level, and we, as I said, need to move it further. Fortunately, there is another attempt or very good results um, that was achieved by the DGT, DGT of the European Commission, Bratislava, that organizes a slow work terminology, terminology uh, network. It's a forum, it's an open forum where everybody can participate from universities, um, uh, ministries, uh, private sector, etc., etc. And they organize events each year. This year it's going to be held in November in Bratislava, where different players of the uh, national institutions or terminology committees or private sector and, and other experts meet to discuss about uh, the issues of terminology, about unification of terminology terms, about nomenclatures, etc., etc. So that is very important. Uh, the terminology network went a bit further. They created, uh, I think, four um, working groups which specialize in uh, environment, in agriculture, Civil, uh, civil rights and I think employability. And there are two more coming in uh, which, are, which are based or which, which, which aim at uh, information communication technologies and aviation, civil, civil aviation. So that's, and the results uh, of the Slovak Terminology Network are published or are uh, published in, uh, in IATE, so this, in, this, in this network. Uh, the other event that is very important also to mention uh, from, the, from the theoretical and practical perspective is the Terminology Forum which was created in 2006 at the University of Trenčín and this forum, uh, the aim of this forum is to bring together the academics, practitioners and experts in terminology and uh, to, 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 to dis discuss the current issue of the terminology that is still in, in, in development. Well, we see translation and interpreting as a multidimensional process where we normally tend to hear about terminology management. There are other issues coming in, such as post-editing, proofreading, marketing, networking, etc. Where is terminology? Terminology is something that is meant to be a part of translation studies. And the question is, should it be a part or should it be a separate subject that should be taught for, for uh, the trainees, or the, for the future translators or language service providers. And that is a great challenge for us, for the institutions, uh, to set up concepts which would focus on content-related methodical didactic innovations in translator and interpreter training at universities. Is it possible? Yes. And that's why I would like to uh, say that in order to find out what our trainees need to know in order to be uh, competitive in the market, we decided to make a small survey, 2015, and in this survey we sent the questionnaires to 25 small and medium-sized enterprises in the Nitra region. That's the region where the Constantine uh, University is located. And uh, we wanted to find out what these companies, these were foreign uh, companies, because there are many, many foreign companies in Slovakia, from Germany, from Austria, from France, Italy, UK, etc. And uh, we wanted to find out what are the main languages used in these companies, uh, what people do the, the specialized translations or the, the language uh, services, what training did they get? And basically what we wanted to find out was how they maintain, process the terminology databases. That was very, very interesting to find out. 
and uh, we uh, came to a conclusion that, well, on a whole, we came to a conclusion that uh, terminology work as such is not reflected in the practical terms. They do not feel the necessity to work with terminology and to dedicate part of the budget to terminology and to terminology departments. One exception may be mentioned Volkswagen. Volkswagen is an exception in this way. They have their technological department in Bratislava, but it's only one big company. Uh, and other companies, they hire translators, but they don't pay much attention to the terminology development. So uh, one company was just a subsidiary of a German company. Return rate was not big. It was 44%, so 11 questionnaires were returned. So what was the result of the survey? As, as you might assume, English is widely spoken, so especially for companies with trading partners from different countries. German took the second place, so the Ger German language is, of course, no wonder because you know, Austria and Germany is not far away, uh, they uh, communicate in, in, uh, in, uh, in two uh, in uh, several companies in German, and then, of course, uh, English is the second language. Uh, how is done? How is the translation done within the companies? In two cases, it is done by internal translators, which is also uh, interesting, and in other cases, they hire external translators or translation agencies, and that's something we will witness. I suppose we will witness in the future. Most of the work will be outsourced, but. That's another issue. The, the other issue that we have, uh, where we were interested in, was the education of translators. So, in six cases, uh, the translators completed uh, the study translation, and in four cases, didn't have translation training. They were just experts with language skills. And in two cases, the translators had no professional background. Okay. They were just, I would say, laymen who has acquired the skills necessary for the translation services. Okay, what about the terminology uh, databases? Systematic recording, bilingual, multilingual terminology, because we know that terminology work is very time consuming, it's very demanding, and it's very, very uh, structured. So terminology work is something that needs time to be developed. And we found out that in three companies, they keep the database. Uh, in one company, they keep internal database, but only done by a translator. And in other seven companies, they do not have terminology database. We wanted to find out why. Why? We didn't get the answer. So three of surveyed companies that uh, do not yet have terminological database expressed interest in cooperation in the preparation of diploma thesis. And that's the second point I would like to continue with. The question may be why these companies don't pay much attention to terminology. We, okay, we were reflecting this. We said, okay, they haven't seen it done properly. They don't know how the terminology work could be done, how the, the terminology organization of terminology management can save their time and money. They don't know that. So we said, we can show it. We can show it by engaging our students in the process. And here's the question, of course, uh, very tricky and, uh, and tempting question. Is a translator a wallflower or a girl for everything? So is the translator a shadow of, of the company or is the translator supposed to do everything? In translating and doing the terminology work. That's a big issue we have to uh, that, that is for, for a larger discussion, of course. That's uh, not a question that we can answer immediately. Uh, so, uh, at the Constantine University, at my alma mater, where I worked previously, we decided to go a step, step further and bring uh, the terminology work into the teaching process. Well, translator training in Slovakia is done in these languages. So they can be both combined, it can be in English, German, Russian, French, Spanish and Slovak. And there are various combinations possible. And they are done at bachelor, master and doctoral level. That's very basic. Uh, 
how is the terminology word dumb in the teaching in translated training? Well, uh, terminology work, it depends mostly on the time and the conditions, could be done as, as was previously mentioned by Olga, punctual, as a punctual terminology work, ad hoc, ad hoc research, but it, it is not uh, done so, so very often because here we need the prior knowledge, we need to expose the students to uh, the terminology theory which uh, is still not uh, laid down in the, in the curriculum. But we do it from time to time. Uh, the second option is more frequent, that's what we do. We do the text-related terminology work, so as you can mm, probably imagine it is done in the seminars for translation where um, the terminology uh, is processed and, and, and researched as was uh, today demonstrated by Mrs. Fisher. And the third option is the subject-related terminology work, which is very special, very focused, and it is done only for, by, by those students who decide okay, to do this way of terminology work. It's not for everybody, it's, it's, it's an optional uh, subject uh, related to the diploma thesis. And diploma theses are very uh, good tool to prepare the students, I mean the terminology thesis, very good to prepare students not only for terminology work, but also to prepare them for a specific domain they choose. It could be anything, it could be engineering, it could be medical science, but it must be very narrow and very focused. That's sometimes the most difficult part at the beginning. The student should decide to write a diploma thesis in terminology. The most difficult part is the, the beginning, the definition of the domain, of the field. Because it should be narrow, it should be very focused. And here we have a directive which was elaborated by the Ministry of Education. And here there are some recommendations of the fields of study they can choose from. Of course, as you, as you, as you know, terminology or Mm, uh, the fields of study are still increasing, increasing. So now we don't only rely on this directive. I would say that uh, we, um, we, we hire external consultants who can help us to just uh, pick up what is, what is relevant for the particular domain. And here we started with the MA thesis which are bilingual, that's very important to stress. They are written mostly in the native language, but the outcome of the terminology thesis is uh, a glossary, which is in two languages, either English or German, which as a, as a, as a source language, and the target language is always Slovak, their native language. So they have to choose the theme, the, the, the domain in which they are they have interest, and they are supposed to do very thorough and, and, and precise text-related research, specialized texts, not popular scientific journalistic texts. No, they are excluded. It must be very specialized, it must be consulted by an external, external consultant. And then, they are supposed to process at least 60 terms in the form of a complete terminological entry based on the guidelines that we give to them. And of course, that is a condition that each student must have at least one external consultant from the field of study they choose. And of course, they mm, are supposed to acquire relevant knowledge of terminology, which is not very easy because of the time frame. They don't have much time for it. Okay, when we say they start the first year of study, or they finish the second. But most, from my experience, I can say that most students start with a terminology thesis in the second year, and their time is, is, is very tight. So that is something uh, we should change. But as I said, the, the terminology work is only a guideline, or is only a tool to make them aware how the terminology works. Uh, that was the past. Uh, we have uh, a bunch of terminology theses that ended in a drawer and nobody saw them. 
that we said, why is it so? We need, we can, we can use this diploma thesis for the market and we can make them more available. And that's why we decided to, these are the diploma thesis from different fields of study, we decided to uh, create a project called TransTEM and uh, the title was Collaborative Creation of Terminology Databases Using Web 2 Technology. And the, the outcome of this project was the online date, uh, database TransTerm. TransTerm as an online didactic tool, not a uh, finalized pro uh, product. And here you can see how it uh, looks like. TransTerm can be found, can be found uh, on our website, I will show you. I will show you uh, the website later. Here you can see uh, the domains which are represented here according to the directive. So there are humanities, natural sciences, agriculture, technical sciences, etc., medical sciences. So there are more domains. And here you can see the uh, the glossary, the entries of the of the, of the trans term. It could be also imported or exported in PDF format according to the, to the needs. Here you can see what it should look like, so what it needs to have, it should have the, the field of study, it should uh, bear the title, it should bear the name of the author and the compulsory uh, entries such as definition uh, source, context, which is not, which is optional, etc. Synonyms and some, some uh, other remarks. And here in this, in this way, the students get uh, more insights into the terminology work, and they get a special training because I can see it as a as a as an added value because they don't learn just language or translation, they learn another field of study in which they may potentially work. So they get a training in a specific subject area, they acquire the competence, the subject related <coughs> research, and they get the competence of critical evaluation of the sources, which is a very, very important topic nowadays, because as you know, the internet is flooded with rubbish, and it's sometimes really difficult to distinguish the, the relevance or the, the relevant information from the irrelevant. And here is a very good, uh, here it is very good uh, uh, opportunity for the students to, to, to experience this research or this search for the, the, the right terms and think critically on the sources. And of course, they can compare more multilingual terminologies. Uh, second issue is, uh, concerns the product, which is a technical component. And this is maybe uh, seen as, a, as an issue in the long run, because uh, each database needs continuous updating. It needs supplementing of existing entries, incorporation of uh, supplementary material, etc., etc., because there are very interesting domains, technical domains, where not only the definition is sufficient, we need to, uh, to add some more visual material, or there are, there, are, there are described some processes where we need to implement some, uh, some links as a motion picture, which is also a great challenge for, for the developers. But it could be done technically. It could, it could be done. It's only the uh, the communication that needs to be done with the developers. It's not easy, believe me. I've done several projects on this in this way, and it's sometimes very very hard to find find uh, the right um, the right understanding of these issues because for well, the developers, the, the, the IT experts, they are experts in something else. They they are not experts in languages, but we are here and we need to help them in order to make the product perfect. Uh, but there's also some, there are other issues because 
it's not only it's not only that the product as such needs to be understood by the by the users, which is not always the case, but it's another issue that needs to be also uh, complemented in in these in these considerations. And the third point concerns the users, and that is something which can be seen as a pragmatic component uh, because this platform is interactive. Okay. You can be registered as an author, you can make changes, you can modify the content anytime. Uh, you, can, you can access this platform as, as an unregistered user, you can access it as a teacher who makes comments, and also on the, on the top of that is the administrator who uh, solves the technical problems and also the remarks, because this is an open platform and if you see some, some insufficient material or some, some, some errors in the entries, you may contact the teacher or the administrator to change it or to correct it. So it's an open source, I would say. And also, uh, it is accessible to large groups of users. So here we can see a very close link between practice and training. And we, here we can see that the trainees need to see it, not only how it works, but all, also how it could be used and why it is used. And that's how they can communi communicate it with their potential employers. So I would just sum it up. This platform can be seen, can be regarded as an enlightenment work on the importance of terminology and terminological work in the context of transcultural subject-specific communication. This area is very broad. The terminology is, 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 is a broad area because of new domains coming in, into market and uh, we would need more time and more stuff to cover all these areas, which is, which is, which is impossible. That's why we, uh, we just need these communication platforms in order to be able to think terminologically. Okay? Think how the terminology is created on the conceptual level, because it's not only about language, it's also, as we have heard today, about, about the logic, about the structure of the language. And then the language level comes at the end. It could be done uh, in both approaches, which are applied nowadays. So it is used there as an onomasiological approach, so from, from um, meaning to form, or vice versa. It is up to the, uh, to the supervisor, to the, to the student, and also it depends very much on the area of, uh, or the, on the domain in which you create the terminology database. Well, there are also some disadvantages, as I have already mentioned, limited time for the preparation and uh, insufficient experience. Many students don't have much experience in terminology work. They need to be pushed, they need to study a lot of resources, not only uh, the books that we recommend to them, but also the standards, the norms, uh, for example, ISO norms that were uh, translate into English, but there are some norms in, uh, in Slovak language and other languages. That's, that's something they need, need, need to, uh, to study. And also, uh, that's the biggest problem, as I could say, is uh, it is uh, insufficient knowledge of a particular domain. Here, they rely only on the, on the external consultant. They cannot do without it. Because, as uh, we have heard today, the conceptual level, to, to, to understand the concepts, not only uh, the, the, the designations, because first we start with concepts, then we uh, attach them to the designations, and also the definitions that must be a part of it is uh, something that, that needs more, more, more in-depth analysis. And that could be done only with an external uh, expert and only uh, with sufficient time framework. These are the primary resources that we use for, um, for, for uh, a project and for terminology work. I have to say that terminology as a subject, as a discipline, is taught at the university. I have been teaching it, well, but as a part of something. It is a discipline called lexicography and terminography. And to be honest, I dedicated to terminology only half of the semester, which is not very much. So I provided students only with the basics the terminology. That's why we would need uh, to implement this knowledge uh, to more practical 
practical uh, uh, seminars. And also, I would just mention only quickly our handbook that we have written together, cooperation with Olga Vrede and with uh, one of our colleagues from the Department of uh, Informatics, Martin Berlik. That's the introduction to terminology and terminology could work, where we provide the students with the very basics how the terminology work uh, can be done, should be done, must be done, and also we uh, show them how to work with the platform uh, Transterm. What are our wishes, perspectives, challenges? Uh, why we have come up with this project? We just want to correct the gaps in terminological preparation, which is still very huge, and it could, can't be done within one or two years. We need more time and more engaged staff. We need also cooperation with practicing translators who deal with real problems. Okay, we can pick up some problems that we have in teaching, but it's not enough because they are not proven. And if the, these um, translators who have real experience with terminology and real problems that they can ha face in uh, regard to the market, that is something that we need uh, to uh, prepare the students for. Networking with other languages, terminology institutes would be great, would be perfect for us as a, as a minor language, slower language, which is a uh, language of limited, limited diffusion. Uh, we could take maybe a small part in this by providing uh, uh, the, the, the great institutes, the big players with the contents that we created, even though we don't have sufficient funds to uh, manage these big platforms technically. And uh, the last point is to develop a clear concept for the didactics because terminology and other domains have clear concepts. What about the didactics? Well, we have some concepts that we have uh, taken from, from, the, from the standards, from the norms, and we, we will try to apply them, but it's still, still not enough we would uh, need a unified concept of how to teach and practice the terminology work. Probably you would be interesting, thank you very much for your attention, I would just promise to show you the, the platform, what it looks like. Uh, it is... It's gone. online and there are some glossaries. It's in, in Slovak glossa glossaries and here you can find the finalized glossaries. Uh, in each glossary there's around well, 60 to 80 terms that need to be processed. Not more. Up to 80. Okay, here you can see the number of entries and it's always uh, the foreign language English or German and the target language uh, is Slovak. Of course, we are planning to add more languages such as Russian, uh, French and, and Spanish possibly. But so we would need more, uh, more, more terminologists or people who deal with this uh, specific domain because it's not uh, for teachers who teach translation or other subjects. It must be someone who has experience with the terminology work and with the terminology didactics. Yeah.